Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5. I, was, I should have counted up, but uh, you know, I've been a preacher for a long time. I'm curious in myself how many Mother's Day sermons I've preached, you know? Uh, it, it's interesting. And uh, there's some great examples in Scripture of mothers, uh, you know, different ones that have, have lived for the Lord and great women of faith. Uh, but this morning, the, the topic or the title is, What's a Mother to Do? <laughs> and, you know, the, the Lord talks about some of the, the characteristics and the things that a mother should do, and most of them apply to all of us, uh, but some of them are, are a little, little bit specific. Uh, we know that God established the home. Uh, you know, we don't believe that uh, these things just happen by chance. Uh, God made the first home. He made Adam and Eve, and He, he told them to have children, and they did. And you know, as, I, as I looked in the Bible and, and looked at the word mother, I noticed two things that repeated themselves quite, quite frequently. One is the word honor. You know, it's one of the Ten Commandments. Honor your father and mother. And he says there'll be a blessing if you do. It's the fifth of the, of the Ten Commandments. Uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, uh, verses 1 through 4, let me just read those verses. Now, You'll see where I'm going here with this. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 1, he says, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren, the elder women as mothers. He just puts that in there, and he, it, it's like he just assumes we, we should know how to treat our mothers. The elder women as mothers. The younger as sisters, with all purity. Honor widows that are widows indeed. But if any w widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home and to requite their parents, for that is good and acceptable before God. You know, there in, in that scripture, uh, he talks about mothers. And uh, one of the things he talks about when he, he relates it to widows, which uh, mothers as well, and he says that uh, we should show piety toward them. That means reverence or honor. You know, as, as you look at motherhood in scripture, you see that Honor is just a normal part of the home life, should be. We should treat each other with honor, treat each other decently, and particularly uh, our mother. He uses the word there, requite, to requite their parents. I know some people would like to pay back their parents, but this is talking about paying them back with good, all right? Now don't get uh, mis mistaken there. Bless or reward uh, your parents. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2, he says, Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise. It's just a, a repeat of, of the Ten Commandments. That's one of the things I noticed. It's usually related both to father and mother. Honor your, your parents. The other association I found with motherhood came up over and over is the word leave. Um, many times God talks about the fact that uh, being a mother means that your children are going to leave. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31, for instance, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. Boy, that sounds hard, doesn't it? But you know, that was right at the very beginning, Genesis chapter 2, uh, when God established the home. Uh, he said, Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife. They shall be one flesh. Uh, God established the home, and as parents, maybe it's harder for mothers, I, I don't know. But uh, he, he uses that word quite often. Isn't it a strange thing that here's a job where our, our role is to not be needed anymore. <laughs> we need to raise our kids to where they can function without us. Uh, a mother raises her children to be able to, to leave. Well, what's a mother to do? How, how is a mother to do that? There in 1 Timothy chapter 5, where we started, uh, verse 14 says this, I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, now that's being a mother. Guide the house. Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Now, I want to home in on that, that one phrase particularly. Now, obviously, to be a mother, you, you bear children. And then he says to guide the house. That means to manage family affairs. You know, a mother is not just a useless addendum to, to the house. Uh, she's a very important part of the house. Uh, one uh, Pastor, I know, says that she's the Holy Spirit of the home. Uh, and I think that's a, a good way to put it. Being a mother is hard work. Uh, being a mother is necessary work. It's good and it's valuable. It's God-given. I think it's time for us to put the honor back in motherhood. 
you know, we're, we're living in a world where, uh, a world where motherhood is denied. Uh, you know, it, it's looked on as wasting your time. But it's one of the most, really, there's no earthly job more important than being a parent, particularly being a mother. Uh, uh, no career outside the home uh, is more important uh, than being a mother. Uh, in Titus chapter 2 and, and verse 5, as I was preparing this message, I thought, boy, this is controversial stuff. <laughs> a few years ago, it wouldn't have been. And it's just basic scripture. Titus chapter 2, verse 5 says to, to mothers, to wives, uh, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. And you know, as I read that, I thought, there's the problem. That's why people aren't living what the Bible teaches. The word of God is being blasphemed. It's just being regarded as nothing. And uh, you know, God says to, to mothers that uh, they're to be keepers at home. Uh, like he said in, in 1 Timothy, they're to, they're to guide the house. You know, in the news and with the government, we're constantly hearing about the problem of child care, funding it and doing all this. Listen, God has a child care solution. It's called mothers. You know, if, that were, if, if a news camera were here recording that, man, we would get hate mail. Let me tell you, uh, the word mother is not only a noun, it's not only a person, it's also a verb. The word mother means to nurture and to care for. Kids need mothers. Now, I know there's situations where that's uh, impossible, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, th um, through death and, and so on, but God calls upon a mother to, to guide the house. God, God values the home, and it can't properly exist without, without mothers. Mothers, let me encourage you. Uh, guide your house. The second thing I would encourage you to do, and we're going to turn to uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, is to guard your heart. Guard your heart. And like I said, these apply to men and women alike. 1 Peter chapter 3, and we're going to look at quite a few verses here. Um, he, he talks to wives in verse 1. We're going to look at that. Uh, he talks to husbands in verse 7. We're going to look at that. Uh, in verse 8, he says, finally, be ye all of one mind. But in verses 10 through 12, uh, the Bible says this. Uh, 1 Peter 3, verse 10, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips, that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil. That word eschew means to turn away from. Let him turn away from, eschew evil, and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it, or pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. In life, we have a choice. Uh, we're constantly confronted with situations, with things. And we can choose to respond in a godly way or in an ungodly way. And uh, you know, as, a, as a mother, as a person, guard your heart. You, you know, those little thoughts, uh, sometimes you think, well, nobody knows and nobody cares. But listen, it makes a difference. Those actions, uh, guard your heart. Don't let your heart be hardened. He uses the expression there, eschew evil. Uh, turn away from evil in all that you do. You, you know, this is a big problem today. People with hard hearts. Uh, you know, they get offended and they say, I'll, have nothing, I'll never have anything to do with you again. Don't harden your heart. Uh, leave your, the opportunity open uh, to be a blessing to someone. Uh, you know, divorce comes so, so commonly and so frequently now uh, where one or both harden their hearts against each other. Uh, guard your heart. Be careful in your heart towards God. You know, I'm, I meet people who've hardened their heart toward God. God has spoken to them. God has tried to, uh, to speak to their heart and they've said no. You know, there's a verse in Proverbs, I think it's Proverbs 14. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. You, know, you can, if you look at that, that scripture, there is, is in italics. And you can actually read that, the fool has said in his heart, no God. <laughs> and we're just foolish to harden our hearts against God. And be careful you don't harden your heart against people. Especially, we're talking about mothers this morning, especially your spouse. And, and I'll tell you what, that's the one, it's easiest to do it. <laughs> you know, because you're constantly in, in touch. And you're constantly talking and communicating. Uh, let me encourage you to appreciate what you have. 
You know, there's a lot of people think uh, the, past, you know, the grass is greener on the other side. There's, there's better pastures and so on. Uh, appreciate what you have. I, I remember when our children were little, after church on Sunday night, they always wanted to do something. You know, can, can we go out and can we go somewhere? Can we do this? So one, one night after, after church, as we we're on our way home, they'd say, can we go somewhere? I began to describe all the wonderful things at our house, not telling them, I said, oh, we're going to a place, they have a trampoline, and they have a room with lots of toys in it, and there's food there, and there's a playground out the back, and boy, they begin to get, get excited, oh, oh, good, we're, we're, we're going to get to go somewhere, and when we pulled in our driveway, they began to cry, <laughs> we don't want to go here, <laughs> you see, they didn't appreciate what they had, and you know, in our life with people, we need to appreciate what we have. We need to appreciate the people that God has, has given to us. Don't harden your heart against them. Appreciate them. Don't let your heart be hardened. In verse 7 there, he says, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and being heirs together of the grace of life, that your, your prayers be not hindered. Don't let your, your heart be hardened towards those that are heirs with you in the things of life. Not only don't let your heart be hardened, but follow God's word. That's the way to avoid having a hard heart. Uh, follow God's word. Uh, let's work our way through chapter 3 here. He says uh, to the wives in verse 1, and again, we need to apply these to ourselves as we can. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husband, that if any obey not the word, they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste Conversation coupled with fear, your reverence toward God. That word conversation there means manner of life. It's not just talking about talking back and forth. He's talking about your, your manner of life. Follow God's word for knowing how to live. Your manner of life needs to come and be directed by God's word. And, and it needs to be coupled with fear, reverence for the Lord. Follow God's word in your conversation. Verse 3 who is adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Uh, follow God's word in how you adorn yourself. Now, he's not saying there, don't comb your hair or use makeup or things like that. He, he also talks about putting on of apparel, and he's obviously not saying we shouldn't wear apparel. Uh, but he's just saying that the important thing is not what you put on the outside. It's what you put on the inside. And it, it's so important that we, uh, we adorn ourselves in the right way. Now, you comb your hair, brush your teeth. Ladies, uh, one of the leaders of a university I went, went to used to say, Ladies, if, if the barn needs painting, paint it. <laughs> You know, uh, I'm not against makeup or anything like that, but the main thing is your heart. And he says we, we need to follow God's word concerning our heart. We need to have a, a, a meek and quiet spirit, he talks about there, in the sight of God of great price. Uh, verse 5, he, he illustrates it then. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughter ye are as long as you do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Uh, some have said the, the amazement is uh, you know, how, are, how your husbands do, uh, how, how well they do. But anyway, uh, watch your spirit. Uh, I believe the wife sets the attitude in the home. You know, God calls on men to, to be leaders, uh, but we're, we're heirs together as husband and, and wife. In, in verse 7, we, we read, Ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. It's going to hurt our relationship with the Lord if we're not right with those nearest and, and dearest to us. And sometimes, listen, you can't change someone else, but you can change you. And that's the one God's going to hold you accountable for. Uh, we need to be careful that uh, he says there in, in verse 8, finally be all of one mind. You know, someone would read that and they'd say, yeah, that's my mind. <laughs> we should be of my, of my mind, the husband's mind or the wife's mind. 
But that's not what it's talking about. Now, Philippians uh, 2, he says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And the illustration he gives is, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. He took upon him the form of a servant. That's, that's the kind of mind we, we need to have, a humble mind, a servant's mind. You, you know, if everyone in the home has a servant's mind, you'll be all right. If we'll treat each other with, with humility. And, and he goes on there in verse 8. Be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Yeah, a home will go a long way when there's compassion, a uh, concern uh, for people. You know, the world talks about passion. Oh, you've got to have a passion. God talks about compassion. And that's a whole different story. Uh, we need to have a concern. He goes on and says, love as brethren. That's an interesting thing. You know, if you'll have just brotherly love in your home, it'll help you. <laughs> you know, the world talks about love, and generally they're talking about lust, you know, physical things. God has a higher standard, agape love. God so loved the world. But it, this is a different kind of love. This is brotherly love. If you'll just have brotherly love in your home, man, you'll, you'll enjoy your home a whole lot better. <laughs> you say, how can I have brotherly love from my, from my wife? Well, the Bible, did you notice back there that your wife has a hidden man in her heart in, in verse 4? <laughs> uh, we can have brotherly love. We can love each other as brethren in Christ. And then he says, be pitiful. Now, as soon as we say to people, you're, you're pitiful, that's not what he's talking about. He's saying, have pity for each other. Let me tell you, man, it's not easy being a wife who has to submit to you. Or to me. Man, I, I'm constantly amazed at, at my wife's graciousness to me. You know, ha, she has pity on me. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's, it's not easy being a wife. Men, you need to have, have pity on her. Women, you need to have pity on your, on your husbands. Uh, it's hard being a wife and mother. It's hard being a, a father and a husband. And then he says, be courteous. You know, there's some things we shouldn't even really have to say, aren't there? But God points this out because sometimes we're not. We need to be courteous uh, to each other. And we, he's talking about here in the home. Husbands, be courteous to your wife. Wives, be courteous to your husband. Uh, we're heirs together. You know, men are not more important than women or women more important than men. Uh, we're, the ground is level at the foot of the cross. And God gives us different... Uh, roles in the home and so on. Uh, we need to follow God's word. Boy, there's some practical things here, aren't there? And then he goes on, verse 9, basically says, not retaliation, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise, blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing. You know, God wants us, he doesn't want us to retaliate. That's the natural response. If someone does something, you do it back twice as hard, you know. You, you'll get them. Don't live that way. God wants your home to be a blessing. If nobody else will be a blessing, you be a blessing. Have a servant's mind. Humble yourself like Christ did. Ephesians chapter 4, you know, he talks about being kind. But uh, the verse right before it says this. It's like he, he just puts in there every word that could have anything to do with being mean. <laughs> He says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you. Oh, I forgot one. With all malice. <laughs> he says, put away all that mean stuff and be ye kind one to another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another. Even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Uh, I have a sermon I preach about the, the, one of the most important things in the home. Forgiveness. And it's true. Listen, you not only need to give it, you're going to want it. And uh, you need to give it so that you can receive it when you need it. And God says for mothers to guide the house. But he also encourages them to guard their heart. And man, I believe he says much the same to us. And then thirdly, in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, give your honor. He says in verse 15, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to everyone that asketh you a reason of the hope that's in you with meekness and fear. You know, who or what you honor is probably one of the most important statements about you. 
who you honor, what you honor, or what's important to you. He uses that word sanctify there in verse 15. It means to worship, to acknowledge, to consecrate yourself to. And what he's saying there is honor God. Sanctify God in your heart. God should be important to you. And now, talking to mothers, put God first. Honor Him. You know, that's, that should be why we do what we do, is because we want to honor the Lord. You know, God tells children to honor their parents. But you know what? They're probably going to learn that from us, parents. We're going to have to honor the Lord, first of all. You know, as we honor God, you know, right honor flows from Him. I, I am around people a lot, all kinds of people, and you know, I see parents who are very disrespectful to their children. Uh, I've heard people speak to their children in just awful ways. Um, but you know, the main respect comes be because they don't recognize them as what God had made them. Uh, children need our discipline. And, and many parents say, Oh, I love them too much discipline. No, you don't. Put God first. Honor Him first. Uh, parents to children. Children to parents. I mean, God says, children, honor your parents. First commandment with promise. He said He'll bless you, if you will. And one of the truths of Scripture is we reap what we sow. Listen, you treat your parents with disrespect, you're going to pay for your raising. <laughs> uh, you know, you better treat your parents with respect so that you'll reap what you've sown. Your children then can treat you with respect. Uh, wives to husband, like he says in verse 1, uh, be in subjection to your husband, uh, that if any obey not the word, they may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. People should see Jesus in you. Uh, to the husbands, he says in verse 7, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife. Very specific, isn't it? Giving honor unto the wife. And in verse 15, he's saying, all of us to the Lord. You know, if you'll honor the Lord, he'll help you to know how to honor others. He is the Lord. Give your honor to God. You know, the question comes this morning, is he the Lord of your heart? Is he the Lord of your heart? What, what is your hope is really a good way to look at it. You know, I've, I've heard of people and I've met people who've lost their hope. And the reason they've lost their hope is because their hope isn't in, in Jesus Christ. And we sing the song, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. That's where you need to have your hope. Not in your house, not in your marriage, not in your health, not in your finances. That's not your hope. That'll all disappear. But God is eternal. That's where our hope needs to be. And it needs to spring from there. Do you know Romans 8.24 says we're saved by hope? An interesting verse. We're saved by hope. And the hope he is referring to there is faith in Christ. We're still there in 1 Peter 3. And he uses the word hope there. You need to be ready to give an answer to everyone that asketh you a reason of the hope that's in you. What's your hope? Verse 18 is where it should be. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Uh, your hope needs to be in, in Jesus Christ. You know, God says we need Jesus. Uh, Romans 3 says there's none righteous. Romans uh, 3, 23, all of sin. Romans 6, he says the wages of sin is death. That's us. We need God's forgiveness. We need our hope. And God supplies what we need. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. We need hope. God offers hope. But you know, he tells us that we have to receive it. It's a decision we have to make. John 1, 12, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. <coughs> See, God offers himself. We have to receive him. Uh, I would encourage you this morning, if you're not sure, be saved today. He says there in, in 1 Peter 3.15, Sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Trust the Lord as your Savior. And then, as a saved person, live your hope. You know, live that hope that you have day by day. And this applies to all of us. You know, honor God in your life. Honor others. You know, there's no one who we have the right 
to disrespect. We need to honor others. And he says that we'll inherit the blessing. Now, that's what God intends there in, in verse 9. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise, blessing. Listen, when someone yells at you, bless them. Well, God bless you. Thank you for that word. <laughs> Knowing that you're thereunto called that you should inherit a blessing. Listen, you don't need them to bless you. You've got God's blessing. And God wants you to have blessing in your home. God wants you to have blessing in your life. And knowing that you're there and too called that you should inherit a blessing. I, I think mothers should be encouraged this morning. You know, if you'll live for the Lord, the Bible says in Proverbs 31 that your children will rise up and call you blessed. You know, as human beings, we're a bit slow. And it takes us a while to, to realize what a blessing a good mother is. And uh, you know, if you're doing your best for the Lord, there'll come a time when your, your children will say, thanks, Mom. And the Bible says, your husband also. Husbands are even slower sometimes than, than the kids. But uh, you know, they'll rise and say, boy, what a good mom you've been to our kids. And, and I hope that that will be your testimony. Uh, men, we need to be godly men. Uh, the world needs men who will stand up for the Lord. You know, the only person you can publicly ridicule is a man in our society today. And it's done all the time. It's hard being a man. But God needs... God needs us to, to trust Him and to honor Him first of all. Start by trusting Christ as your Savior. That's where it starts. The new birth, born again. And then continue by honoring Him as Lord. Let me encourage you this morning. God has a blessing for you. And, and it comes through Him and His Word and His Holy Spirit. And uh, you can have it today. Let's uh, go to Him in, in prayer. Father, we are grateful for Your goodness. Lord, we don't understand all of these verses, but uh, we understand the, the basics. And Lord, I pray that if there are any here this morning that are not saved, that your Holy Spirit would help them to uh, confess their sin and, and uh, Lord, just to repent of their sin and turn to you by faith through grace. God, help us as Christians to live for you. Help us in our homes to do the best we can. Uh, Lord, help us to be gracious and kind. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to take our songbooks and go to page 153. It's a song, I Surrender All.